We're spending 22 minutes today with Sebastian Stan, one of the stars of a fan. Fantastic. I never say that. <laughs> <laughs> a fantastic movie. That's one of my favorite I, words. Tanya. And uh, for people who aren't familiar, I told my kids about it and they're like, well, who's Tanya? I'm like, you don't know who Tanya Harding is? Like, come on. Yeah. Wow. It, it is just, it is riveting. And it's getting great buzz, too. How did you wind up playing the role of the infamous Jeff Galuli? <laughs> uh, well, I had seen the. Um... 30 for 30 price of gold um, kind of recently uh, actually uh, around September of last year but around the time that I received the script and and the meeting to Skype with Craig Gillespie who was the director at the time and so everything was pretty fresh in my mind but I was yeah I, I, I was kind of curious intrigued and sort of mystified by the whole thing and 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 just overall I was already kind of obsessed with trying to find out who was telling the truth and what really happened and um, so that curiosity was there for me from the very beginning um, and then when I read the script it was so sensationalized in ways and then on top of that the fact that it was a real story really made it even more bizarre and crazy right. and um, it just seemed like a no-brainer to want to try and do it. Sure. I mean, I remember talking about the story back in, right. before the 1994 Lillehammer Olympics, and it seemed unbelievable for people who don't know the story that this skater's husband, Jeff Galuli, just right. like, I just like saying Galuli. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's what just, a name. It just rolls off the tongue. All right. Um, they hired somebody to kneecap Tanya Harding's skating rival, America's skating sweetheart, Nancy Kerrigan, and you know, at, at the time, it was it was very black and white. The coverage of it, it was like Tanya bad, right. Nancy good. Yeah. But this movie really it it tells you all about Tanya. Yeah. Well, again, it's just it, it's a uh, it's you know this movie is going to be I think interesting for people even if you don't know anything about the story or you know you do have some idea of what happened or what you might have heard and and actually anybody that I actually end up talking to everyone has their own little point of view about it and it's mm -hmm. very funny to me because it's nobody nobody really knows what happened but right. this at least uh, is is a screenplay based on the wildly contrasting interviews that Steven Rogers the screenwriter had with Tanya and with Jeff and um, the two of them just had a lot of different things to say about what happened and hmm. and uh, at least in, on Jeff's side it's kind of I think the first time that you really hear you know his point of view from it as well and and uh, again it's just a different take on maybe what you right. maybe don't know what happened you know or right what, or what you think happened so it is based on those interviews because as Very I'm much. watching it I'm saying oh yeah I kind of remember that but wow I didn't know that yeah and yeah I mean this is so so it, actually it's a new take on the story as well that we haven't really heard before yeah. now Jeff Galuli uh, you act, you actually met him before you I did before I you did yeah I went to Portland uh, Oregon um, about a week or two before we started shooting I really wanted to go there I wanted to go to the you know the, the ice rink where she started skating and where they met I went to where they had the first date you know I just went to all these places that I I just wanted to be there um, and I hadn't really been in Portland I wanted to get the accent and of course I wanted to find him. Yeah. What'd you think of him? Um, what, what kind of what kind of guy is he these well, days? Well, it's listen. It's weird. I mean, it's like it's strange when you're spending time researching somebody, um, and uh, and it was really hard for me to actually find a lot of stuff on him. I mean, there's a couple of things on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, but I was trying to just piece together, you know, a, a life, a personality, and and then you meet the person, and so. It's a little bit like you're in the twilight zone because you're, you know, you're looking at them and staring at them, and they kind of think you're weird. Um, but look, he, he was just very, I think, taken aback uh, as to why anybody wanted to make a movie out of the story. It seemed to me that he was sort of hesitant to, you know, kind of want to revisit this. Um, story altogether all but these years later I guess yeah and I was just saying to him I was like listen I know it's your life but like it's a really I just don't come across a screenplay like this I really just you know okay. from an acting perspective like as an actor I, I looked at that and I saw gold you know right. in the sense of the screenplay um, but I just primarily wanted to 
you know, I wanted to see his physicality. I just wanted to see what he looks like now. I wanted to see, you know, try to get an idea of how he grew up or what, you know, what he was like. I mean, that's, that's your job is when you're playing somebody that existed, you're just trying to piece together a life. And his different iterations of facial hair. <laughs> yeah, he definitely has a, <laughs> yes, he, and, and yeah, exactly. I, I actually think I even asked him, I was like, where did, like, where did you think the mustache was going to, like, where did that idea Why? come from? I was like, was it Tom Selleck? Like, what? <laughs> um, but he, you know, apparently, I guess that's what, that was, it was kind of popular in the 90s, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so now a lot of this, a lot of the success of the movie, I would think, had to be based on the chemistry between you and Margot Robbie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is, sure. you play two people who are crazy in love, with, with the emphasis on the crazy, yeah. right? Yeah, well... What was that like working with her in those, in those really, some really volatile scenes? I mean, I, I, it's one of those things where sometimes as an actor you really, you know, you really hope you don't have to audition. <laughs> but I have to say I'm was so glad that I had to audition, I had to do this chemi chemistry test with her because it really informed me a lot, and I think both of us in that, on that day in the room about how we were gonna approach this relationship, you know, and, and how we'd work together, and it was dead apparent to me on that day that, that we, you know, there was always, I wanna, maybe this is the wrong word, but I, there was always a light heartedness that we both had to approaching mm -hmm. this, because we knew that this was very intense material right. to some extent, and we, you know, we wanted to have a, a great sense of trust, and there was a lot of generosity, uh, I think, on her part, and, but, but I always felt from the get-go that, um, I just felt safe with her, you know, and that she was willing to go anywhere. And, you know, uh, and sometimes that took us into fits of laughter that we couldn't stop for, for, you know, a long time throughout shooting. And then other times, you know, we would kind of both sort of sit on one end and kind of not argue, but like go, well, you know, she would have known at this point. Well, no, actually she didn't know at this point. And then, no, no, no. And then Craig would have to come in and kind of go like, okay, guys, look. We got to tell the story. Um, Did she actually was, punch you once? She I, says I read, that, right? I read an yeah, article yeah. that like, she, I'm could, sure she, she got did. so carried away. A thousand percent. Yeah. I'm sure she did, and I <laughs> took it, well, you know, I welcomed it with all my heart. <laughs> Listen, if Margot Robbie wants to hit me, she can do it anytime. <laughs> and how was it working with uh, Alice and Janney as, as the mom, which <sighs> there's so much that, that I didn't know about Tanya Harding. Yeah. I didn't know that she had a mom like that. Well, and that, all you that gotta explains do is... a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's the, you know, that, and that's what's heartbreaking at the same time is that I think one of the themes in this movie that's being explored is the fact that so oftentimes we seek the love that we get in childhood or what we associate to be love and you know sometimes you know the the, the line between love and trauma are, are, are is so so small and and in this yeah. case you could really understand from her point of view how how embedded those two things were for her growing up um and uh and yeah and and so the relationship that she had with her mother is very important, obviously, in the story because it shaped, you know, for better or worse, who she was and how she approached her work, love or hate. Mm -hmm. And Allison, you know, is <laughs> just like a, a force of nature who happens to have turned in performances that are unbelievable yeah. for decades at this point. Yeah. And it's like watching her for me was more kind of like a master class in acting that's how I, I I remember it and and really just trying not to crack up because she she had some of the greatest lines in this great movie. lines great lines just watching yeah. her on the ice smoking yeah. smoking yeah. the little more yeah. <laughs> cigarettes my favorite, one of my favorite lines is when she's like well she's a soft two you're like what does that even mean it's like you know describing the age of yeah the yeah age she's of a soft two yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like great yeah, it's crazy. And she feels that being mean to her daughter is going to get extract a better performance from her on the ice, which is kind of messed up, too. It, it is messed up, you know, but that's something that, you know, you always kind of, it's interesting to think about, isn't it? Like, yeah, it like is. if you have a gun to your head, you know, are you going to run faster than, than, than if you're not? You know, like, it's just that mentality, I think, that Tanya very much, like, dealt with, which was that if she's always under pressure or if she's always not feeling good about what she's doing that she actually performed better and you know that it's such a I wouldn't want that kind of mentality but but that's one of the things that is being explored in the movie is like right. what that what does that do to a person right. 
So there are these crazy violent scenes with, with you and uh, with Jeff and Tanya. And then you use the word lighthearted. I don't, I don't think that's the wrong word because there are, there are some lighter moments between the two of them. Right. There's one scene in particular which really struck me where um, I guess I was one of their first dates and he says uh, of her skating, like, you're, you're a super... You're, you have a superhero power, like you have oh, a superpower. Super power. Yes, yeah, superpower. And yeah. she just, right. right. Oh, you know, opens up, opens up to that. Well, I, you know, look, I, I really, it, it was very difficult for me not to judge that character. Like when I first read it, particularly because of the way he was written in the script. Um, take away what you heard or what you don't hear. Like in the script, he was all these things that you end up seeing in this movie at this point, you know, and. But, I, but I, I had to kind of like, in order for me to kind of, uh, you know, do my job, I had to sort of find something that I could kind of grab onto to, to find a way in, I guess. And, and the, my only way in was that this was just somebody who seemed to me to be in awe of her and very much kind of probably did love her or they did have some love relationship as toxic as it was mm -hmm. but perhaps was ill-equipped to really deal with those emotions and ultimately the fame that they both i think that all the people involved were ill-equipped to deal with the fame that they got as right. if you look back in the 90s most <laughs> most people that were famous for 15 minutes seemed to not be able to handle it yeah. but but yeah, like you said, I think there was, you know, for us in the movie, we, we needed to find that lightheartedness in, in terms of mixing the violent aspects of it with something that's a little bit more on the comedic side. Otherwise, I just don't think it would be watchable. Yeah. Otherwise, it'd be too much of a, of a documentary. I, I use yeah. the word superhero, superpowers. That's my cheap segue yeah. to get into your, your, <laughs> your oh, yes. other, other part of your movie career, the Marvel movie. So another yeah. Avenger movie is coming out. Next year. It's coming right. out tomorrow. I mean, it's coming out next year. <laughs> tomorrow is the trailer for. Um, oh, is it? Yeah, oh, for the, the big Infinity debut. War. Yeah, yeah, which is going to be. I saw it yesterday. Actually, okay. I was in Atlanta, and I was. You know, it's kind of it's interesting when you're in the movie and then you're watching the movie and you forget you're in the movie. You're just caught up in. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the spectacle of it. But I don't. I don't think Marvel fans are. are they're, they're not going to forget that this is this is coming out. This is a big thing. Is this is this the movie next year where there are just just a whole bunch of, yeah, of it's, characters it's from the everyone. universe? Yeah, it's everyone. I mean, Everybody. it really is everyone from yeah. the get go. You're talking about packaging ten mo ten years worth mm -hmm. of relationships and characters and histories into a two and a half hour movie. I mean, that, the way that they did it, I. You know, I haven't seen it, but the way that they've done that is, is, you know, kind of, I'm blown away by it. And the Guardians of the Galaxy? Guardians are in it. They're in it. Everybody. Know, Doctor Everybody. Strange is in it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm leaving so somebody Marvel out. Marvel Palooza. Could it is on, like on, that, on yeah. The screen. And, and you, of course, play Bucky Barnes, the, the, right. the Winter Soldier. Is it true that you actually read for the part of... Captain America. I, I always. I did. You did. Okay. Yeah, I did. Sometimes those stories are apocryphal, but that yeah, that, yeah. that happens to be a true one. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. I did, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's actually funny because I, I, I when it happened, uh, it obviously didn't go my way, but but um, I ended up having a meeting with uh, Kevin Feige afterwards, and uh, he started talking to me about Bucky Barnes instead, and I think he was just sort of gauging my interest in it, which. You know, from the start, I he had because um, I think this is the only role I could have played. Really, I mean, I'm so biased now at this point. You know, I, I don't picture myself really having played any other role. But um, he did say to me recently that when I walked out of that meeting, he said, "Well, we didn't know whether you could really play Bucky Barnes, but we knew that you could definitely play the Winter Soldier." So that was, I guess, that's what kind of led to them hiring me yeah. there yeah so then you get i mean when you get a deal like that to play that character in that universe with all these different movies coming do you right. say to yourself jackpot like this is the the greatest thing or or does it become a little bit trickier than to manage your career and to and to have the time to do other movies and other projects like i tell you well i think yeah i think it's both mm -hmm. I, I really do i think it's a little bit of both i mean you know the thing with marvel is that i never really knew i mean yes i was Looking back now, when I trace back the steps, I, go, I look at 2010 when, when it was the Captain America movie, and I realize how blessed I was because mm -hmm. it no doubt had an impact on 
me even being in this movie and talking to you now. Uh, so, but at the same time, I never really knew that um, because they very much have, even though they have had a long-term plan, it seems to me they very much operate movie by movie. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's actually, we never knew we were going to make a Winter Soldier movie. You know, we never knew that my character was going to get this far. Right. I certainly didn't. And so it's always been more of a humbling experience that way. And, and uh, at the same time, yeah, I think now it's just such a blessing that I was granted this ability mm -hmm. to kind of pop in and work on that character and then try to find something that's a little bit different. And mm -hmm. this, this I, Tanya movie was exactly that. Yeah. Now, if you Google Sebastian Stan, I suspect you probably don't do that. But a Not lot when I, you know, not unless I want to anxiety attack. <laughs> well, I hope this isn't one of the things that gives you anxiety, but a lot of articles come up. Luke Skywalker, uh, you know, Mark, oh, Mark Hamill, right. you know, side-by-side -side pictures of you and a young yeah. Mark Hamill, and that you would be the perfect choice to play um, uh, Luke Skywalker and a, a young Luke well, as, as they're now having the young Han Solo movie. Do, do, you, do you like that or do you hate that? Because sometimes I would think people would be like, I, why do you say I look just like that person? I do not look just like that person. I'm very okay. With You're that. okay with that? Yeah, I really am very okay with it. Uh, but you know, my friend recently ruined it for me. He goes, yeah, but like, I feel like you would be like a middle-aged <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Because you're really? not really... You're not really young, if you think about it. And also, and I was like, that's right. And then, and then he was like, and I've already done a young Luke Skywalker movie. And that's true. Like, I was looking at it going like, well, we have young, like, uh, young Luke Skywalker with Mark right. Hamill in the originals. But what they don't have is what happens after Return of the Jedi when I guess he would be middle-aged. And then if they ever were Middle-aged being 30s. In, yeah, in, in I mean, a I'm young just, person's world, that's what Yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> if they ever really wanted to potentially visit what happened to him yeah. after those movies then you know give me a call is there any but 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 there's no serious talk about it right now is there or is there look i mean everything begins in the imagination right i mean it's all like <laughs> well know, that sounds like a yes oh uh, you got to visualize the goals and that's what needs to happen so has jj abrams or somebody been calling you about it no but they should they should um, <laughs> no they haven't i don't know <laughs> you know i mean look marvel and disney are on the same lot so mm -hmm. i I, I keep going to the Disney side and use their Starbucks in order to hopefully run into somebody. But okay, I haven't all right. Yet. Okay, well, we'll see how that works out. Um, we are, you know, a New York City radio station, so I got to get the little local flavor yeah. in here. So you were born in Romania. Right. Raised in Rockland? Yes, I came uh, to, in Rockland County, New York, uh, in, uh, in Congress in Nyack. I came in 1995. And then to Rutgers? Rutgers University. And then from Boston. Rutgers to Hollywood. Now, how, how did you make the transition from... More like 42nd and 8th, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was my first apartment was on 42nd and 8th across from Port Authority. $800 a month. Okay. Yeah, that was in 2005. You probably saw some interesting things happening at the, it was amazing. At the Port Authority. No, it was great. I mean, <laughs> look, I, you know, you, I walked out and the movie theaters were right there. I mean, I, I haven't left New York yet and actually... Um, I'm really happy about that because I used to always hear the number nine. People always used to say it was nine years that you had to be in New York in order to consider yourself a real New Yorker, oh, New really? York City. Huh. So okay. I'm, I've, I've gotten past nine, so I guess, I guess hopefully now I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> how, how did you make the transition, though? Like, what would you consider sort of your, your breakthrough role when you said, okay, you know, I, I, am, I am going to make a, a career of this, uh, this acting thing? Um, I, well, it was kind of around 2005. I mean, um, I, it was a, there was a movie there called The Architect, and I got that um, the summer that I that I moved into the city, and that felt felt pretty good. I mean, it felt kind of like I was doing the right thing. Um, but I, I guess I always knew I wanted to do this to some, in, you know, in some capacity because I never really felt like I was honestly good at anything else. I mean, it was the only thing that kind of really engaged my attention um, in such a strong way. So, you know, I, I guess 
I don't, I, I don't know. I never really thought of how, how else it would have turned out had, had this not happened. So, yeah. uh, Too many uh, acting credits to even get into in, in our oh, 22 I don't, minutes. I don't know about that. But, but you have thank a, you. You have a new one coming up, too, with uh, Mandy Moore and... Mandy Moore. J.K. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yes, yes of course. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. I... Uh, that's right, J.K. Simmons, yeah, and Mandy Moore. It was, a, it was a sweet little movie that we did about a year ago that I'm really still hoping will, will come out yeah. at some yeah. point. And in the meantime, I, Tanya, and this uh, made its premiere at the Toronto? Toronto Film yeah. Festival. Now, right. that's a big deal, right, to, to get a slot like that to premiere a movie? Yeah, I think so. I, I think I'd been at Toronto Film Festival one other time, and it was, an, it was a great experience, but... Um, yeah, we were happy. Listen, we were happy about it because we shot this movie this year. We shot it in January of in this year. In 31 days? Is that in 31 true? 31 days, yeah. Oh my gosh. And so it, the fact that now we're, I'm here with you talking about it in the mm -hmm. same year that we shot it is just kind of wild. It doesn't usually happen like that. So, yeah. so Toronto was great for us because it was, you know, it came right at the right time and then it got people, you know, got people talking about the movie. A lot of buzz. Oscar buzz. Does that put kind of a pressure on, on, on you at all or you know, have I, to live up to ex expectations or something? I don't really, uh, listen, I don't have anything to compare it to. I've never really been in a situation where uh, I've certainly um, been, you know, I've been in films that were nominated and uh, won things before, but I was never involved to this extent in them uh, before. So I don't have a comparison. I don't have anything to really kind of like judge it by. I take mm -hmm. it, you know, yeah, as sure. it comes. But um, the work is done. Like we can't reshoot the movie, <laughs> you know, we can't go back and change things. I yeah. mean, the movie's finished. Now we're just yeah. happy it's out there and, you know, it's on everybody else to kind of decide how they feel on it. Well, I can't wait to get home today and watch the last hour of oh, it and no, really enjoy it. Seen the last hour. I, I, I have oh, to go to bed. Right. Yeah, 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 of course. I, it's a sad life. I go to bed no, very no, no, early, but I, it is. It's just riveting. It's terrific. Thank you so much yeah, for coming in, Sebastian. Sam, I, Tanya, the movie. Yes. Go see it, everybody.